Oh my. When that's what it takes to win a rally against Annalie Waters and Catherine Brento, it's no surprise that they're undefeated as a partnership. Sources tell me it is effing tough out here. Big, if true. We'll have more from that match later. We're going to recap all the action from Bristol, Tennessee. This was the fourth straight week of MLP slash PPA Pickleball, and we have two more to come. So let's not waste any time. Let's get after it. And please go ahead, like, and subscribe this video, and maybe even send it to a friend. We'll start things off with singles where something very strange happened in a semifinal. This is Federico Staxford against a very talented Kwong Duong. Has that updated Yola paddle, the exact hey, same piece of equipment that Brooke Buckner was using. There was a lot of talk about these new mod Yola paddles running a little hot, but still Federico absolutely balling out here. This is a semifinal and he is pickling Kwong Duong and he's not done. Look at these passing shots from the baseline, getting it around Kwong. We have got the rare, maybe one of a kind, semifinal double pickle. Federico would advance to the final where he would play Ben Johns. Now do keep in mind, Federico Staxford is the number one player on the PPA tour in men's singles points, but that's just a number, and once the match starts, doesn't really mean anything. Not really a hot take, I don't think, but Ben Johns is still the guy to beat. The head-to-head -head record against Federico Staxrud speaks for itself. He was able to get back on top and get the gold medal. Moving on real quick to women's singles. Brooke Buckner trailed at the end change. However, she is going to rally back using that Yola paddle as well. She's going to get Caitlin Christian on skates. Going to keep ripping it. She's She's been playing so well lately. She's going for back-to-back -back singles gold medals here, and she is going to get it done. Just catching the line. These passing shots are incredible. Now, Annalie Waters did not play singles. She withdrew from the event. However, you can only play whoever's in front of you, and Brooke Buckner is beating whoever is in front of her right now. So for men's singles, it was Johns Gold, Staxrud Silver, and Tyson McGuffin getting the bronze. The man knows how to find a podium. On the women's side, Buckner, back-to-back -back golds, Caitlin Christian, back-to-back -back silvers, and the second career PPA medal for Zoe Wong. And here's a new chart for y'all. We've got PPA 2024 men's singles gold medal tracker. Ben Johns and Federico Stacks are tied at five apiece coming into this. Ben now takes the lead. Connor Garnett with the pair, Chris Hayworth with one, and Dylan Frazier, who took the very first one of the year, and we haven't seen him back since. And here we've got PPA 2024 3 2 1 weighted medals three points for gold, two for silver, one for bronze. And even though Ben Johns has more golds, Federico Staxrud is much more consistent at making it to the podium and is significantly ahead of him by this metric. Annalie Waters has won seven of the 15 PPA Women's Singles Gold Medals this year. This was Brooke Buckner's third, that is second most. And again, 3-2-1 weighted medals, this time for Women's Singles. Annalie Waters sat out the last couple events, and look at that. Brooke Buckner has overtaken Catherine Prento and Leah Jansen by this metric. I was going to try to show the points race, but I wasn't sure if all that data was updated. There's so many events. I figured it takes a little bit of time. So I decided to just stick with this for now. Moving on to mixed doubles, game three late. Jackie Kalamoto and Jaume Martinez-Vic trailing, but check out this. Oh, if, it, if it lands in the court... That's all that matters, and that one finds the back corner. Now, this was the mixed semifinal, but it was played on Saturday morning due to rain delays, and oh my goodness, we've got a match point for Jame and Jackie. Let's see if they can close it out. early in that point to get them back to neutral. Anna Bright, no stranger to semifinals. When they got the ball back, they did not give Jame and Jackie another chance. Able to close it out here. Jame leaves it up just a little too high. Anna able to punish it. Now that's the only mixed clip I pulled. Ben Johns and Anley Waters did get the gold. Alshon and Bright, Silver, and Jame and Jackie took them the bronze. Here we've got the distribution of 2024 PPA gold medals in mixed doubles. Ben Johns and Anley Waters claiming the vast majority of these. Etta Wright got two with Ben when Annalie sat out a few tournaments. We've got a real quick look at the 3-2-1 line chart for mixed doubles. Be sure to follow me on Twitter 
and Instagram. I usually share most of these charts there. Also, just have lots of fun discussion. And with that, let's move on to gender doubles. Here we are in the quarterfinals, and don't look now, but we've got another little bit of a scare for Anna Bright. This match looks like it is comfortably in hand, but that would not last. Brooke Buckner and Zoe Wong, who both medaled in singles, remember, were able to come all the way back from down 6-10. Going to get it tied up here at 10-10 after a little bit of help off the net. And they're actually going to end up with a match point. They could have sent Anna and Rachel, the girlies, home in the quarterfinals. But like we saw in the mixed doubles semifinal, if you have a chance to take out Anna Bright, you better take it. Because when they got it back, they did not give it back. Yeah! Wow, there it is. Moving on to the final, we've got, no surprise, Anley Waters and Catherine Prento versus Bright and Rohrbacher. And yeah, this rally might look familiar. Excuse the dragonfly that flies in front of the camera there. Uh, we opened with this one. It's just honestly incredible. The defense, so many just ridiculous resets. Uh, might be up there with rally of the year. I don't know. Is that hyperbole? I'm trying to think of the other ones off the top of hand. There was the classic Federico Saxford, Jaume Martinez, Vic singles rally that went a little viral. I'm sure there have been others, but I mean, it's just absolutely incredible here. This match wasn't particularly close as far as the scoreboard goes, but there were so many incredible rallies. Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrbacher were just firing away, and Anley Waters and Catherine Prento just put on a defensive masterclass. And of course, Anley Waters, you know she's got firepower as well. And taking a look at the 2024 PPA Women's Doubles Gold Medal Tracker, it's really no surprise that this was the final. When these four women are in the tournament, they're probably going to play on Sunday. Shout out to Tina Pisnick and Leah Jansen for sneaking in there and grabbing one, though. Before I forget, shout out to Georgia Johnson and Vivian Glosman for winning the bronze medal. And speaking of bronze medals, here we've got our 3-2-1 weighted medal Women Pro Doubles PPA 2024 Medal Tracker chart. Don't really have anything else to add here. Let's move on to men's doubles, which right now is the most interesting PPA discipline. It's been talked about a bunch. I've talked about it a bunch. I'm going to keep talking about it a bunch. There's been a massive upheaval at the top. Can the Johns brothers turn it around or will they continue their gold medal drought, which goes all the way back to April of 2024? We'll jump right into Championship Sunday, where Christian Alshon and Kwang Duong, the Texas Ranchers MLP men in their first PPA tournament together, made it all the way to Championship Sunday. Notably, J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier were upset early, which set the stage for this matchup. Texas Rancher men got off to a 2-0 game lead, but it looked like the Johns brothers were coming storming back when all of a sudden, the vibes just shifted, and they never shifted back. Oh, no. It. And, uh... Ben can't believe CJ didn't put a paddle on this. It went right past him. So keep an eye on that. The brothers are not happy with each other right this second. Oh my, and a drop to follow it up. Into the net it goes. A 9-10. Christian Alshon generating some offense from the right side, but it's Ben who puts it wide. Tied up at 10-10, and again, it is Alshon from the right side attacking. This is the new meta. This is it right here. And this serve was weaponized for the winner. Oh my goodness. Kwong Twong and Christian Alshon have taken out the most dominant team in men's doubles in the world. I mean, Kwong and I have such an awesome dynamic that we can both be the alphas on our respective sides. I mean, he's an animal on the left, I'm an animal on the right. So I think we just, we gel very well together and we can, you know, cr uh, drive and crash very well. And that's kind of the strat. Go Ranchers. There you have it. The Johns Bros drought continues. Let's take a look at our PPA 2024 Men's Pro Doubles medal tracker. J.W. Johnson, Dylan Frazier, Ben Johns, Colin Johns, all tied at five. Christian Alshon now has his second of the year. Kwong Duong not only got his first medal, he got his first gold medal, and it wasn't even in singles. Of all the disciplines you thought it would have been in, you definitely would have picked singles for him. He was getting double pickled in a single semifinal. He's a single specialist. Now he's golden in doubles. Go figure. That's one of the great things about MLP, though. This partnership never would have come together. Even with MLP, it shouldn't have come together. It took an injury to Christian Alshon, who had a stomach surgery or something done. He led to Kwong subbing in, which led to him getting picked up, which led to this. Speaking of ranchers and that whole situation, major shout out to Pablo Teas taking home bronze with Jade Avillier in this event. Anyway, moving on from the results, there's a few other things we have to talk about. First of all, to bring you up to speed on my personal life, I am 0-5 against my older brother in singles matches, and I'm kind of sick and tired of that. So I brought in Zane Navratil. 
He did a virtual film lesson with me. Go check out that video. We had a ton of fun. Training is underway. Got a drill session in with my dad. Trying to hit basil? Yeah. Aim for it. You can't even hit basil. Hit that, I bet. I missed him and it was out. He fired. Another thing we've got to talk about, this tweet went viral. This is Grayson Golden, who is known for having a pretty big serve. It appears that the PPA slash UPA slash MLP think that the serve is too dangerous. It's being weaponized, which was never the intent. So how do we fix this? Well, we're going to put another line on the court, maybe. They don't want to just do a drop serve for reasons. Go ahead and check out this article that Zane Navratil posted to the dink. He is the all-time ace leader, so I think he is well qualified to speak on weaponizing the serve. And he even got an assist from Ben over at Real Clear Stats, who is also an expert on the subject because he has already de-weaponized his serve. In fact, check out this clip from the cutting room floor of my video session with Zane. Hey, at least you're not using Ben... uh drop serve bro uh, yeah and from real clear stats although at, at the level i'm playing at you can get some freebies just by doing weird things with your serve these are two guys who know how to weaponize and de-weaponize serves the main takeaway here is that server win percentage is flat in mlp i haven't seen any ppa data to go off of but to me this just isn't even a problem my official stance on the matter is if you can't return serves get good Anytime I try to talk to my friends who aren't suffering from chronic pickleball brain rot like I am, they kind of just laugh at pickleball. Let's face it, it doesn't really jump out at you as super athletic. So why do we need to make serves lamer than they already are? They're underhand serves. Get good. One other thing I want to talk about, and this really bums me out. The Sorry Not Sorry podcast has received a cease and desist from UPA. He's no longer allowed to share their clips. He's hoping to get this resolved. He's been so supportive to me tremendous resource. I don't like that at all. Go show him some support in his comment section on Instagram and Twitter. Maybe I'm biased because I'm also using clips that I'm maybe not allowed to use, but I don't really think Pro Pickleball is in a place where it should be chasing content creators who are trying to share their product and talk it up and bring in new people, bring in new fans. I hope to see him back up and running. I think he does a great job. Big fan of his his content. Picklebot did a what's my duper segment and well, I had to send in a video. (laughs) <laughs> oh no come on Matt oh god Daddy pickles. oh stop it's like what Eric Forsyth did this week unbelievable how does he have that many bloopers but he's rated higher than two of the people we just saw. How is, yeah, how is he higher than that? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I did. This is so epic. This is like a way better blooper roll than I could compile for myself. <laughs> oh whips, my gosh. Cool. This-, <laughs> this is absurd. This is so stupid. Like, grown I mean, man. Oh, Maddie. That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I would have guessed for uh, – not. I knew he wasn't a 4-0, but I, I don't know what I would have said. Probably like 3-7. Based on that? <laughs> Based on that, it's tough. He's crushing the – his like statistical analysis stuff is sick too. He's the yeah. only pickleball YouTuber that I actually watch. For now, let's go and call this an episode. If you made it this far, please like, please subscribe, share this. Put a lot of effort into these, and it would mean a lot if you just left a comment or something.